So like many of you, I am somebody who uh, loves football. I, 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 I live for, for football on the weekend, so you know, I, I'm a huge Pitt fan, so yesterday was very disappointing for me. Uh, and of course, we'll see how we all feel around three o'clock today too, right? Uh, but you know, there is something a, a, about going to a football game versus watching football on TV. Uh, I, I much prefer actually being there, going to the games. You know, our family has had season tickets to the Steelers since the the 70s. My one of the last things my grandfather said before he died was never sell those seats. So uh, they're they're staying with us for a while. And of course, um, you know, this is the first year, and I can't even remember how long that we didn't get season tickets for Pitt because this whole priest thing kind of got in the way for me. Um, but um, that's okay. And you know, going to a football game, uh, I, I love all the parts of it because there's just so much going on. It's so it's so fun that they they really put a lot of energy into uh, making sure that it, it's an exciting experience for the fans. But you know, there's one uh, time in a football game when you're there that just drives me crazy, and that's uh, halftime. Uh, because I'm not really a band person. I I, I uh, don't really like going to stand in long lines to use the bathroom or, or wait for 20 minutes for a cold hot dog. Like, like that just doesn't excite me. I'd rather the, the energy, the, the game start right back up again. And uh, so, you know, I, I just wish they could get rid of overtime or, or uh, not overtime, uh, halftime and make it a little bit shorter. But um, the reason I bring this up is because I was having a conversation with somebody the other day and I was talking uh, about this and, you know, they, they then made the comparison of, of halftime being like offertory at mass, you know, like offertory is the time that, you, uh, you know, father does his stuff up here and everyone just kind of takes their break, sings their song and then waits for father to say, pray brethren, and then everyone stands. And I wanted to drive my head into a wall when they said that because offertory is so very important for all of us. There's something very important going on at offertory time. And so I want us to uh, ask ourselves a question and that is during offertory, do we treat that as off time or do we treat that as a true offering? At offertory, do we treat that as an offering or off time? You know, we're, we're still in the 12th chapter of the Gospel of Mark. And for some context, right, Jesus is in Jerusalem. We're almost to the time of the Passion. And he is teaching in the temple area. And so he's right in the center of Jerusalem. And the story that we read, it's actually in two parts. The first part is he gives a warning on the scribes. And the scribes, right, there's all these different groups we hear about. And so the scribes were uh, basically what's equivalent to the biblical scholars of the day. They were the professors, even the word scribe in Greek, grammatus, right? You hear the word grammar out of this. They knew the law, they taught the law. They were the ones that could write. And they obviously liked being treated really well, right? They liked being greeted with uh, terms like probably like doctor or professor. And they, they wore long robes, ignore what I'm wearing now. And uh, they um, would take seats and they'd steal uh, widows money when they could. So uh, Jesus was saying that they will receive a very severe condemnation for their honor that they like to receive. And then it says, he sat down opposite the treasury and observed how the crowd put money into the treasury. And I just want to paint a little bit of an image because that, that could sound a little bit weird for us. You know, when we think of treasury, we might think of a, a bank or something like that. And the treasury in the temple was similar to that. There was actually a room, a, a, a part of the temple that was called the treasury because remember the temple was not just the center of religious life for the Jewish people, it was the center of all life. So not only did religion, but culture and certainly finance flew through 
the temple. It was all there. In the Mishnah, a, a collection of Jewish writings, uh, it actually uh, talks about what the treasury looked like at the time of Jesus. And it says, there were 13 chauffeur chests in the temple, whereon were inscribed new shekel dues, old shekel dues, birds of offering, young birds for the whole offering, wood, frankincense, gold for the mercy seat, and six of them free will offerings. So imagine a very elaborate room, and there were these shofar chests, and shofar were, were the equivalent of like goat's horns, so, so they are hollowed out probably, and so people would throw their shekels into this uh, tube-like thing that would probably then be uh, hidden from the rest so it couldn't be stolen. And people would go and give either in the new shekel list, which was your yearly offering to the temple, or if you lost it, if you forgot about it last year, you'd throw it in the old shekel, or they'd give it to birds to be sacrificed, so a bird would be sacrificed on your behalf uh, by the priest. Think of like how you light candles here, uh, same sort of idea. Or maybe wood or frankincense would be burned in your honor, or there would be gold for the mercy seat because the temple was adorned in gold, or there were six that were for free will offerings for whatever was needed. And Jesus says, many rich people put in large sums, and a poor wood widow came and put in two small coins worth a few cents. And so, well, let me read on. Calling his disciples to himself, he said, Amen, I say to you, this poor widow put in more than all other contributors of the treasury, for they have all contributed from their surplus wealth, but she, from her poverty, has contributed all she had, her whole livelihood. And so Jesus is uh, explaining that the, this widow gave uh, a, um, a, a the, the Greek word that, that he uh, uses, that, that Mark uses, it's basically 1 28th or 1 128th of a denarius, a day's wage for the Jewish people. So less than a few cents, less than a penny or two that it would be for us, but it's all that she had. And she gave it to God out of trust. She gave it to God out of her poverty. And Jesus is saying, you know, all these other people, they're coming in here and giving out of their surplus. They already paid their bills for the month. They did everything. And then what was left over, they gave to God. But this woman, this poor widow, had nothing and she gave what she had, which was barely nothing at all. And Jesus is saying, this is who you are to emulate, who you are to follow. And now I want to go back to the offertory for a second, because I, I, I think that these tie in perfectly together. And I just want to explain what, what happens at offertory, because, you know, it, it, it's more than just singing a song. And of course, the most important part, right, the money basket comes around and people put their offerings in. And uh, then um, we do some things up here because um, there is so much going on because the offertory is really the time for us to offer everything that we have to God. And our money that we give, that we put in the basket, it's not just about uh, supplying for the needs of the church, which it certainly is, but that dollar, or however much you put in, that is a representation, a symbol, of your offering to God. Because think of how hard you work for your money, how hard you work for your wealth. And that offering that you give to God is a representation of that. But it doesn't just end there. It doesn't just end with your money because the offertory is really a time for you to spiritually give everything that you have to Jesus, to God, not just out of your surplus, but out of your poverty. And so the offertory is the time that you come to him with your needs and your wants and the things that you have to ask him for, and that's when you place it on this altar and you give it to him totally and fully and say, 
this is yours now. Take it. Take it, and I don't want to have it back. And then what happens is these gifts of bread and wine are brought forward. And the bread and the wine that are brought forward, they are symbols of your work in this world, right, that, that are brought forward. And you give Jesus spiritually this stuff, all of your stuff and your needs. You give them then, and then those are offered to the Father, and uh, the words of consecration are prayed over them so that they might become the body and the blood of Christ. And so what does that mean? Well, if we go back to that first reading, right, the widow of Zarephath who had nothing, yet the prophet Elijah asks her in somewhat almost of a, a rude way, you know, make me a cake. I know you have nothing, but make me a cake out of the bread that you have. And what does she do? But in faith, she listens and makes the bread. And then in God's abundance provides for her. And so what does that mean for us? But that those things that we give God here at the offertory, we find God in, in our regular lives. We find Jesus in the bread and the wine that are brought forward when we receive so that when we go out, the things that we give him here, we might find in our lives, we might find God in that as well. That God will give out of our, uh, uh, out, God will give abundantly if we give out of our poverty, if we give him everything. And you know, also just one last thing, there are, are, is something beautiful. I like to use incense. I know you complain, I hear ya, but I love incense. And the reason why I love incense, and I'm gonna use it today, I'm sorry, but the reason why I use it is because the incense is an ancient Jewish symbol that, that symbolizes not only the mystery, the smoke that clouds it, but it symbolizes all of the offerings, the prayers that you give, which is why not only the gifts are incensed, not only does smoke arise from the gifts, but you're incensed as well. Why are you incensed? Because you're the offering. You are what is offered to God. That in the offertory, you give him your everything, totally and fully holding nothing back. Like the widow who gave her few cents that she had, like the widow of Zarephath who had nothing and gave it to the prophet so that you give him your, your nothingness, your littleness, so that he might give you his everything. And what does he give you but him himself? And so, my dear brothers and sisters, as we continue this Mass, as we go to the offertory, give him everything everything you need and want and pray for and are holding back, give out of your poverty, leave it here on this altar and let him find you not only in the Eucharist, but in the world that we go out to following this mass. Be at peace.
pray, brethren, that my...